My cross-country journey into the subject of the year 2012 took me to Washington, D.C. As I walked the streets and visited the many sites of the Capitol, I realized that many of America's founding fathers were Masons. Benjamin Franklin and George Washington were both Freemasons. I visited the Capitol building and many other sites. I ended my trip to Washington by going to the George Washington Masonic Museum in nearby Alexandria, Virginia. There he was, our first president, wearing his Masonic apron. There was the symbol of the compass and the square, just like the strange A's on the monument of the Cross of Hende. I wondered what this was all about. Driving south from Washington, I made my way to the warmer weather of the Deep South. A rain began to fall as I entered the small town of Elberton, Georgia. It was there that I discovered a monument called the Georgia Guidestones. This was America's Stonehenge, and like Stonehenge and other monuments, they are astronomically oriented. Built out on a small flat area in the nearby Appalachian Mountains of Georgia stand these huge slabs of granite. On the surface of the stones are etched what looked like some kind of new Ten Commandments in eight different languages. English, Arabic, Chinese, Hebrew, Hindi, Russian, Spanish, and Swahili. Gary Jones is the editor of the local newspaper, The Elberton Star. I asked him about the Georgia Guidestones. I wanted to know what the Guidestones were and who built them. Uh, around 1980, a gentleman came to town, uh, supposedly, and uh, uh, went to a local banker and asked the local banker to help him locate a granite company that would uh, enable him to uh, erect a, um, a, a monument for the future. His name was R.C. Christian. It was a moniker that he gave himself to deal with the local people. and. And he didn't, not, he didn't want anybody to know who he was. Um, and uh, he, the local banker that he talked to was a fellow by the name of Wyatt Martin. Uh, with professional help, they were able to find some granite companies that were able to build the guide stones on a, uh, on a scale that this guy envisioned. And all the, and all the talks about where, where the guide stones came from, it was R.C. Christian. So, yeah, I don't know where the name came from or anything. Uh, when you see these guide stones, you'll understand that we're talking about something uh, much, much, much larger than than uh, than your average monument. So, uh, you know, the idea was to um, uh, uh, help Mr. Christian find someone who who could operate on that that grand scale. It's eerily similar to to Stonehenge, uh, and it's built so that the uh, at certain times of the year. Um, uh, you know, the sun comes through and, and the shadows that it casts and so forth and so on. So it's a really, a, it's really a neat thing. I think that what they've got inscribed on those so stones are, are something that someone thought out and thought out thoroughly. Um, uh, you know, the different languages, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of great work that went into to, uh, putting those stones up and not just not just the engineering end of things, but but the thought that went into putting what what's on those guidestones. As far as the strange stories go, um, um, occasionally I'll get a phone call from somebody who will ask me, uh, uh, you know, are you in the community where the guidestones are? And uh, and they'll have these strange theories about who Mr. Christian is and what the guidestones are and um, 
when they were first erected, um, I think they had some some cult groups come in and uh, do some, um, I don't know, s spend the night out there. And when you see the inscriptions, there are there are guides to the to the future. There are things on there like uh, maintaining a population of whatever. And uh, some people think that it might uh, encourage, um, uh, you know, elimination of, um, uh, of overpopulated areas. It's a message to a, to a future generation, just the way Stonehenge is, just the way uh, the, the um, uh, pyramids are in Egypt. So yeah, I mean, the guide stones are going to be are going to be here for a long, long time. The Cherokee Indians called this part of the world the center of the universe. There's, there are Masons here who, who may have uh, uh, had some influence uh, uh, on the Guidestones. Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Unite humanity with a living new language. Rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Avoid petty laws and useless officials. Balance personal rights with social duties. Prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. Be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. Along the capstone of the Georgia Guidestones, sitting on top of the monument, is a message written in four ancient languages, Babylonian cuneiform, Egyptian hieroglyphics, Sanskrit, and classical Greek. The message says, let these be guide stones to an age of reason. Like a message sent forward into the future, the Georgia guide stones seem to be telling us how to live in a new way. I couldn't shake the strange story of the Georgia guide stones. I was haunted by them and their message. I wondered about the mysterious gentleman, R.C. Christian, who had paid to have them built. Why had he stayed anonymous? Was R.C. Christian an alchemist or a mason? Maybe there is an order of spiritual people who still walk among us. You know, some kind of shamans or alchemists. They might look like you or me, but they are actually more aware than us. They know the future, and they have secret powers of the mind that we have lost. Heading back across the United States, I stopped at the Denver airport to meet a friend. With an hour to spare, I wandered through the airport. In several places, I discovered large murals that had been painted. These murals are spectacular and I was impressed by their artistry and their poignant messages. On the south side of the airport, I discovered a plaque commemorating the men who had built the airport. <laughs> 